you know, for the last almost a year now, we've been looking at living in the kingdom or kingdom living. And we've, we've looked at some different things. We've settled some different questions as to, you know, well, one is uh, whether or not Jesus is the, is the king of this kingdom. Well, Jesus is Lord. He is the King of kings, and he is the Lord of lords. We've, we've looked at whether or not uh, uh, the rules of the kingdom are applicable here and now. You know, is that just something that's off in the su uh, sweet by and by, or is that something that, that we should be doing now? Well, Jesus said, all authority, not most authority, not some authority, all authority is given to me both in heaven and on earth. And then he told us to go now. We, we are to go in that authority. We looked at, at whether or not there, there's any advantage to living as a subject of a new kingdom. For the, the scriptures say, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. That's pretty good advantage right here in the here and now that being said we are to live according to a new set of laws we're we're in a different kingdom and we live we live by a different set of laws see the the law of the flesh the law of this seen realm the law of this world is is uh, moved by what we feel physically, what we feel emotionally. But the, uh, the law of flesh is moved by, by what we think. But the Bible says that, that there is a way that seems right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. God, through the prophet Isaiah, said that his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So we need to adjust the way we think and begin to think in line with the way God thinks. The church is meant to live by the law of faith. And that law of faith is to be motivated by the law of love. You know, the... the in in uh, it says that that faith which worketh by love, and I I don't know about you, but I'm confident that I have met people and know people that operate in in faith, but it's not a faith that's motivated at times by love, and I'm talking about myself. Now, you can take that with however many grains of salt you care to take it with, but you probably have operated in faith before and, and had uh, seen things work, and your motivation was selfishness. wasn't motivated by love. Well, that kind of faith doesn't please the Father. But a faith that is motivated by love is what pleases the Father. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But that faith that pleases God must be motivated by love. So a couple of weeks ago, we, we looked at, at uh, the authority that's found in the name of Jesus. That, that uh, the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Every tongue confess, Jesus is Lord. And there, 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 Paul, or I mean Peter, uh, on the day of Pentecost declared there is no other name under heaven by which men must be saved. You, you, Muhammad won't get you there. Buddha won't get you there. Being a good person won't get you there. It is only the name of Jesus that opens the door and ushers us into the kingdom of the living God. So today I want us to, to look at, at how and when to use the name of Jesus. Turn to Acts chapter 3, if you're not already there. Uh, the title of my message this, this morning is, is uh, 
using uh, the, uh, the name of the kingdom. In Acts chapter 3, look, we're going to start reading in verse 1, and we're going to read through verse 6, and then we'll talk about that a little bit. Now Peter and John went up together to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms from those who entered the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. And fixing his eyes upon them with John, uh, uh, fixing his eyes upon him with John, Peter said, Look at us. So he gave his, them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold I don't have. But what I do have, I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. See, the early church, the early church was fixated. The early church was focused. The early church recognized that there was something about that name. There was, there was authority that was found in the name of Jesus. The devil... The enemy of your soul doesn't want the church to know the power that's inherent in that name. See, in, in reality, the early church knew that the devil was afraid of that name. Do we? Do we know that? According to James... The, the, uh, he wrote uh, in, in his book, he says, uh, uh, the devil believes, you, you, you say you believe, <laughs> you do good. Boy, that's great. I'm really proud of you. The devil believes and trembles. The devil is scared spitless of the name of Jesus and of anyone who knows the authority that's in that name. The devil knows there's a, there is as much power in the name of Jesus as there was in the life of Jesus when he physically walked this earth. Think about that for a second. You know, we, 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 we often hear people say, boy, if I, I wish I was here when Jesus walked. I mean, things would be happening then. Well, his name is here. And there are, you know, the, the word Christian means little Christs. We are meant to be little Christ. We are, we are corporately the body of Christ, and individually we are meant to be anointed doing the works of Christ. See, the, the devil knows uh, Jesus has given the power of attorney to use, the name, use his name. To the church. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. And we, we looked at this a couple of weeks ago. But, but I want us to go back through it again. Just to stir it up in our thinking. It, it, starting in verse. Uh, Philippians chapter 2 starting in verse 5. The apostle Paul wrote. Let this mind be in you. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Who being in the form of God did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. Taking on the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above everything every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and those on earth and those under the earth and that, that, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father Paul says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus listen to or look at, I believe Daniel's got this. I, 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 hope, I, I hope I sent it to him. I think I did. Uh, but, but look at that, how the, the mirror translation presents this. 
the way Jesus saw himself is the only valid way to see yourself. The way Jesus saw himself is the only valid way for you to see yourself. Now I had, uh, years and years ago, I had a lady just get livid with me because I said Jesus never suffered sickness. Oh, he did too. He had colds and hay fever just like everybody else. And no, he didn't. No, no, he didn't. Because Jesus walked perfectly before the Father. He didn't violate any law. That, that's one reason why, you know, that we talk about the blessing of Abraham, a Deuteron Deuteronomy. Hallelujah. I love that song. It's just a little ditty, that, but it's, it's, it's cool. But, but uh, you know, the blessings of Abraham are mine. And Jesus, when he was born, within two years of his birth, finances were tracking him down. Huh? What do you mean? The wise men came bearing gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Frankincense and myrrh were very expensive um, commodities of that day. There's a, there's a word that I was wanting to use, and I don't remember what it was, so bear with me. They were very expensive commodities. But, but he received uh, gold. By the age he was two, it was tracking him down. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. The blessing of Abraham should be tracking us down. But we sometimes think like the world, and we've got a boy, I, I just, I need to get a second job. Moving right along. The mirror once again. The way Jesus saw himself is the only valid way to see yourself. His being God's equal in form and likeness was official. How many of you have ever called God your heavenly father? The rest of your lion. <laughs> we call God our Father. And yet the Jews were upset with Jesus because he dared to call God his Father, making himself equal with God. If you call the creator of the universe your heavenly Father, then you are declaring that you're in his class. See, some of this is going to be hard for us in our natural, unrenewed mind to wrap our... Now, your spirit man is leaping, going, glory to God, I'm finally... Somebody's saying something that's right. And your mind's going, I don't know if I want to... Yeah, yeah, I don't know all that, all that. Verse 6 again. His being God's equal in form and likeness was official. His sonship did not steal limelight from his father. Neither did his humanity distract from the deity of God. See, us being his children don't, does not take anything away from the fact that he is still our father. When, when I was in my 40s, and all of my brothers were at, the, at mom and dad's house, and we just were clowning around, and we got into an arm wrestling match. And I'm the youngest in the family, and I was the, was the biggest mess. They were all athletes and very, very good athletes. And, uh, two of them got full-ride scholarships to universities playing football. And, you know, and I got a full-ride scholarship to the School of Hard Knocks because... I was 
Well, I was. And, and, but but we got, to, got into this arm wrestling, and so my oldest brother said, Come on, Mike. And so I sat down, and, and I put him down. And I was surprised. And my next brother got there, and he said, I'll, I'll show you how it's done. And he sat down, and I put him down. And the brother closest to me is seven years older than I am. And uh, when he was in the eighth grade, he could take a 100-pound dumbbar, dumb, dumbbar, dumbbell and pick it up and put it over his head with one hand in the eighth grade. I couldn't do that now. But, you know, he was... He was, he was. And so he said, okay, here you go. And so I sat down and I put him down. And I'm, <laughs> all three of, the, of them, I, I had up here and I'm thinking, you know, I've just, I'm, I'm an also ran as far as that, that was concerned. And so my dad sat down. And he was in his 70s. And so we're arm wrestling, and he went, <laughs> what? He just he put me down with no problem. See, he was, he was still my dad. There wasn't anything I was going to do that was going to diminish the fact that he was my daddy. And there's nothing we do that... Uh, when, when we act like God's children, that diminishes his authority. But we need to settle that in our thinking. Verse 7, his mission, however, was not to prove his deity, but to embrace our humanity. Emptied of his reputation as God, he fully embraced our physical human form. Born in our resemblance, he identified himself as a servant of the human race. His love enslaved him to us. See, we, the Bible tells us to esteem others better than ourselves. The Bible tells us that, that we're, we're not to think more highly of ourselves than we should. doesn't mean we shouldn't think of ourselves highly, but we shouldn't allow ourselves to think we're all that and a cup of coffee. Verse 8. And so we have this, the drama of the cross in context. The man Jesus Christ, who was fully God, becomes fully man to the extent of willingly dying humanity's death at the hands of his own creation. He embraced the curse and shame of the lowest kind of dying a criminal's death. Verse 9. From this place of utter humiliation, God exalted him to the highest rank. God graced Jesus with a name that is far above, as well as equally representative of every other name. What his name in, uh, unveils will persuade every creature of their redemption. What his name reveals will persuade every creature of their redemption every knee in heaven and upon earth and under the earth shall bow in spontaneous worship now obviously we're not seeing there that that yet but it's coming see in the book of romans paul declares all that all all of creation groans for the manifestation of the sons of god the mirror says that our lives represent the one event every creature anticipates with held breath, standing on tiptoe, as it were, uh, to witness the unveiling of the sons of God. All of creation is groaning for us to begin to manifest who we are in Christ. When, when we recognize who we are and what we have as being children of the Most High God, and have the name of Jesus, all of creation is groaning for us to begin to operate the way we're meant to operate and to do what we're meant to do. Verse 11, once again, every tongue will voice and resonate 
the same devotion to his unquestionable lordship as the redeemer of life. Jesus Christ has glorified God as the father of creation. This is the ultimate conclusion of the father's love. The ultimate conclusion of the Father's love. See, the, the devil doesn't give a rip. You know, I, I, talk, I talk like we talk, okay? Because he doesn't really care. No, he doesn't give a flying rip about how religious we become as long as we remain ignorant of what we have and what we can accomplish through the power vested in the name of Jesus. We should, we should walk continually in the authority of the name of Jesus. The human experiment, experience rather, has, has walked into and out of and into and out of. The church has walked into and out of the authority that's in the name. But God's plan, his intention is for us to walk into the authority of the name and to abide there, to stay there. See, most Christians today use the name of Jesus as a religious good luck charm instead of recognizing it to be the most powerful name in the universe. Yeah, I, I, I cringe sometimes when I hear people use the name of Jesus. Jesus. It's not a cuss word. And it's not a good luck charm. It is the name that is above every name. Often the name is used without any success simply because the law of faith is not employed. See, every Sunday we have a couple of, of prayers that meet with people in the back of the church uh, and pray the prayer of agreement. The prayer of agreement. The prayer of agreement is simply this. Where any two agree is touching anything they ask of the Father, it'll be done. And when Kevin, uh, every Sunday, when he invites people to, to come for prayer, uh, he says, uh, uh, he, he, knowing, knowing that you can ask anything in his name and it will be done. Well, let's go to John 16, 23 first. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the Father in my name, I will give you. Until now, you have asked nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. See, the, in, in John 16, he's talking about prayer. John's talking about prayer. Jesus is talking about prayer. He's saying, whatever you ask the Father in my name, it's a done deal. A lot of, a lot of prayers are, are answered. And I, in fact, I would say most of the prayers that, that are, are prayed in, back there in the prayer of agreement are answered. But some are not. And the question is, why? Why would that be? Why, why would God choose to answer some prayers and not answer others? You know, I, I, I don't believe God chooses that. Sometimes people get out of agreement. Sometimes people don't really expect anything to happen in the first place. But then sometimes... It's not the will of God. <gasps> what do you mean? Well, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15 says, Now this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we've asked of him. So if, if we're praying about direction... The answer may be no. Look at, look at Acts chapter 16, verses 8 through 10. This is the, the, the Apostle Paul. He says, 
Now, now when they had gone through Phrygia to the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Who, who forbid them? The Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit said, no. And, the, and they had gone to Mysia and tried to go into Bithynia, uh, but the Spirit did not permit them. Who? The Holy Spirit. So passing by Mysia, they came to a town or came down to Troas. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after he had seen the vision, immediately he, we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. See, see when we're praying about direction, the Lord may say yes, no, or wait a while. But if we're praying about something that is part of our covenant right, the answer is always a resounding yes. It's not maybe. It's not could be. It is yes. 2 Corinthians 1.20 For all the promises of God are in him yes. And in him amen to the glory of God through us. Tony, what's amen mean? So be it. Tony told me one day, I, I mentioned that, and he said, does that mean we're part of the so be it union? <laughs> Works for me. See, we've said it before, but, so, uh, but amen is not a little ditty that we stick at the end of a prayer so everybody knows we're done talking. It is a declaration of faith. It is a... It is a putting my stick in the ground I'm I'm so be it it's not a could be should be would be ought to be it is a done deal brother Hagen used to say if you're willing to stand forever you won't have to stand too long but we we in because we're in this earthen vessel we have a tendency to vacillate back and forth well that's what it says but I'm feeling this that's what it said, but I see this. That's what the word says, but we need to get our butt out of the way. <laughs> there are some things that we pray about that, that really are not prayer matters. There, there are times that we are to use the name of Jesus to enforce the will of the Father. Here is John chapter 14, verses 12 through 14 that Barbara mentioned a while ago, starting in verse 12. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will do also, and greater works than these will he do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, Folks, this passage is not talking about asking the Father. It's about using his name against the enemy of your soul. Uh, I, now, trust me on this. I am no Greek scholar. But I have the ability to read a dictionary. And I have the ability to read what other Greek scholars have said. And the word that's translated to ask in, the, in, this, in that passage can also be translated as command. So let's read that again and look at it a little differently. Starting in verse 12, Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me, the works that I do will he do also. Sounds good. And greater works than these will he do because I go to my Father. He sent us the Holy Ghost who lives on the inside of us. And the works that Jesus did, we are expected to do. And greater works than that even, we're expected to do. And whatever you ask, whatever you command in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask, if you command anything in my name, I'll do it. 
Now remember the opening passage that we were looking at where Peter and John were going, uh, going to church and passing by a man crippled from birth. Look at verse 6. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. He didn't, folks, please don't be offended by this, but Peter did not go into deep intercession and travail. Peter told the man to get up in the name of Jesus. He commanded him. He said, the name of Jesus. There's a, a professor of Greek uh, at a university once told Brother Hagen. Uh, that the literal translation of, of that passage would, would, or that end of that passage at any rate, would be, whatever you demand as your rights and privileges, that shall I do. Whatever you demand as your rights and privileges. But see, this, this all encompasses us changing our thinking. Changing the way we view things. Let, uh, uh, embracing the mind of Christ. Putting our foot down and saying, no further, devil. I, I, I enjoy watching, I forgot the name of it, The Lord of the Rings. And there's one, I don't even know which one it's in, but there's a, a one where, where Gandalf is, uh, they're the, 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 the powers of darkness are chasing them and Gandalf stops on this bridge and he goes, no further. And Gandalf disappears. No further. But then Gandalf comes back as uh, uh, Gandalf the Grey comes back as Gandalf the White. See, it's, it's, all of the Lord of the Rings is meant to be a allegory of, of the gospel. But no further, devil. You got, you got problems in your family? No further, devil. You got problems in your, in your health? No further, devil. You got problems in your finances? No further, devil. In the name of Jesus. I've told you the story before and this is talking about the blood but it's the blood of Jesus that makes it so my dad was a pretty good art, a gardener when he was alive and uh, one particular summer he was having a lot of trouble with uh, uh, rabbits every time the, the his garden would get up so high the rabbits would come out of the out of the blackberry uh, row that was right next to the garden and and just eat it up he planted it three times and all three times, you got it eaten up. They just ate it down to the roots. And he said, well, I'm going to put a stop to this. And I thought, well, you're, gonna, you're not going to plant it again? And so he went over here to Helton Velker, which was still open at that time, and he bought some stuff called blood meal. And he planted this garden, and he sprinkled that blood meal all the way around that garden. And the devourer would not cross that bloodline. His garden grew. It was wonderful. We got all kinds of fruit off of that garden. But the, those rabbits, uh, those de the devourer, would not cross that blood. The devil will not cross the blood. And it is the blood of Jesus. And that blood is what gives Jesus' name the, the power and the authority. Look at... At, at Acts chapter 9, Peter uh, uh, said to a, to a man who had been bedfast for eight years, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Arise and make your bed. Once again, you don't see him praying. You don't see him going uh, into, into great travail, into inner, deep intercession. And, and there are time for that. There, there is a place for that. But I'm not talking about that today i'm talking about us beginning to be people who understand and use the name of jesus the way god intended for us to understand it and to use it the name of jesus has not been taken away from the church 
in the name of Jesus has not lost one iota of power. It's as powerful today as it was the day God conferred the name upon him. So, so why does the church seem to be weak and unable to do the works that Jesus commanded? Let's, let's, let's go back to, to Acts chapter 3. And let's start reading this time in verse 11. Now as the lame man, this is that same story, this is just a continuation of that same story, the, the, the guy at the gate beautiful that, G, that uh, Peter said, get up in the name of Jesus. And he has gone running and leaping and praising God through the temple. And so now in verse 11 it says, now, now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch which is called Solomon's greatly amazed so when peter saw it he responded to the people men of israel why do you marvel at this and think about that just for a second we get so excited when somebody gets healed and it's peter going what well, it should be commonplace we make a big deal out of it and we it, it I, I've, I've told people before, I am firmly convinced beyond a shadow of a doubt that faith is meant to be casual. Jesus said when the 70 came back, they were all excited that the demons were subject to them in the name of Jesus. And he said, why are you all excited about this? Get excited that your name's written in the book of life. This is, this is a side show, a, 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 a benefit but the, the, the joyous thing is we've got, a, we've got an eternity to spend with the Father. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran to them on the porch which is called Solomon's greatly amazed. So Peter, when he saw it, responded to the people, said, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why so intently, why look so intently on us as though through our own power or godliness, we have made this man all walk. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith, of, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. See, see Peter, I believe, brings forth two different factors that hinder the church today. One of them is verse 12. Uh, why do you look so intently on us as through our own power or godliness we've made this man walk? See, people, people either think they, 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 that this was done because they were so just, they were just so holy. They spent hours on their face before God. And, and I'm not diminishing the, the, the need that we ought to be prayers. But you can pray until the cows come home and you're blue in the face and if, and if you're thinking it, it's be, you're going to get something from God because of all that, you're going to be blue in the face with a bunch of cows at home. See, people either think they, they've done this or that, and so they deserve it, or they, or they think they're totally unworthy, and so they don't even try. We've got, we've got to understand that we need to let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. 
Now look at verse 16. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. See, through, through faith in the name of Jesus, and, and only through faith in the name, do we have authority. We, we've had all the, the use of the most powerful name in all the universe at our disposal. And yet we walk around at times like unwanted stepchildren. God loves you so much that he has given you the name of the king to appropriate everything that you have need of in this life. See, God wants us to live the, the abundant life John 10, 10, the thief comes not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but I have come, Jesus has come, that you may have life and have that life more abundantly. God wants us to live the abundant life in the here and in the now. The Bible tells us that, that faith, faith comes by hearing, and that hearing comes by the word of God, just as, but, but, we need to recognize that just as the children of, uh, of Israel had to go out daily into the wilderness and get manna, the church needs to feed daily on the word in order to keep our faith strong and vibrant. See, faith doesn't come by having heard. Faith comes by hearing. In the book of Hebrews chapter 2 the writer implores the readers to give more earnest heed to the things which they've heard, lest at any time they drift away. The message Bible of that verse says, the cru it's crucial. It's crucial. It's an imperative that we keep a firm grip on what we've heard so that we do not drift off. God's word says, for this reason we must pay closer attention to what we've heard, then we won't drift away from the truth. The Amplified. Since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we've heard, lest in any way we drift past them and slip away. So the question this morning remains, where is our is it, in, is it in what we see? Is it in, in what we feel? Or is it in the name that is above every name? And we've said it before. Faith does not deny what we see. Faith does not deny what we feel. Faith does deny what we see or what we feel to have the final say. Do you got anything?